Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Today we're back here with, well, Nostalgia Critic with another review from Tom and Jerry. Well, in an honor of the holiday season, it's a Nutcracker tale. So, yeah. Considering we saw the Nutcracker 3D, hopefully this one's a lot better than that. Which, with Tom and Jerry, probably, but we'll see. Hmm? So, let's take a look back at Tom and Jerry and Nutcracker tale. Be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Here we go. This episode brought to you by Factor. America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Also brought to you by Shady Rays. Fit style and performance sunglasses without the big brand price. Here we go. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia. Hey, Critic, how you doing? I remember it so you don't have to. You know what doesn't translate well around Christmas? <laughs> that. <laughs> Nutcracker. Hmm. Don't get me wrong, millions of people watch the ballet around this time of year, mm -hmm. but when it comes to any movie or TV adaptation, usually they're pretty weak. And the reason for that might be True. the story is weak. But that's kind of the idea. It's a backdrop for pretty music, beautiful dancing, and creative scenarios. Nobody's really gonna analyze the story arc of the Nutcracker or the Rat King, so it's no surprise so many adaptations don't work. <laughs> you know what else hasn't translated well? Tom and Jerry. Eh? After their incredibly successful run at Hanna-Barbera decades ago, the duo have never been able to have the same amount of creative or public praise. Okay, I have a soft spot for the live-action film, but acknowledge the worst part is the live-action film. The animation on Tom and Jerry is the only thing that works. True. But surprisingly, people say mixing this that hasn't translated well and mixing this that hasn't translated well, translated well. Really? I mean, this is kind of my Tom first take Tom and Jerry, a Nutcracker <laughs> tale, was released in 2007, and mm -hmm. is one of the few Tom and Jerry Same. and Nutcracker adaptations that seems to get positive feedback. Really? Okay, nobody's calling it a masterwork or anything, but it is Tom and Jerry. fans of the two seem satisfied with this combination. Hmm. It certainly isn't anything I would expect to be that great, but maybe I'll be proven wrong. Shall How well does a style that incorporates no talking mix with another style that incorporates no talking? Let's go while find out. incorporating talking? Well, let's yeah. take a closer look. Main characters Tom don't talk. You'll be fine. Here we go. Uh-oh. They froze over. The same way as Batman and Robin has to be good. Uh -oh. Once upon a Christmas Eve, the Nutcracker Ballet was performed to everyone's delight. Particularly the AI generator that performed it. Yeah, the style in the beginning is a little odd. odd. Sometimes it looks like a regular Tom and Jerry short, and other times it looks like the Story little book? golden book version of Black Swan. Yeah, huh. sensitive one. King of the it actually does seem like a Coke storybook animation, which is kind of odd. I wonder why they did like that. Mm -hmm. You got me. <laughs> well, anyway, here comes Tom's side. The cats, that's what he is. Taking all our sustenance. Like it was really his. Outside, we see Tom and his cat pal singing about their leader, the king of the cats. As you probably put together, the role of the Rowans has been changed from villains to heroes, which is actually kind of a clever change. But he's really something special. James Lipton's final performance? Is he? Also, am I crazy or did this Nutcracker <laughs> music sound like it hijacked by Master of the House? Everybody raise a cheer! Maybe because we know he's here! Everybody raise a cheer! Raise it up the master's ass! Everybody raise a cheer to the king of the cats! Everybody raise a glass to the master of the house! No, silly me, it's the bitten in the butt song from Animaniacs, my mistake. Uh, bitten in the butt! Gardener for care, took a little nibble from the very air. Cherry and tough ears. Honestly, I thought it was like going jellical cats or something. I don't know. Like, tell me you didn't see that in a second. Wait, did they incorporate cats into this? <laughs> Wait, come on. Anyway, here comes the magic. Sad Holy. as they have to wait a whole year for another performance of Nutcracker. Nothing for Jerry in this empty place. Except his love of the ballet. From that angle and with that animation, Ooh. I might love ballet too. Mm. <laughs> Jerry dreams of dancing, but sadly he has rom-com main character syndrome and is a total klutz. Wah, wah. Okay. <laughs> Move over, BC yep. from Cinderella. We have other animated mice doing questionable things. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Suddenly, 
Um, Wish upon a magic, star? Magic, I guess. As Jerry is transformed into the role of the Nutcracker Prince, complete huh. with great dancing. Random magic continues as the toys around him come to life as well, including a ballerina from a music box. Oh boy, this'll be just like the steadfast tin soldier. That has a happy ending, right? Disney wouldn't lie about Hans Christian Andersen, right? A mouse yeah, king needs a kingdom too, even if it's built on fragile magic. Fragile, fragile magic? magic? God is looking at this thing. I gotta up my game. No kidding. The color and lighting in a lot of this is pretty impressive. It reminds me of the few times Hanna Barbera put extra time into their backgrounds to really give more atmosphere outside of just slapstick comedy. Makes sense. Speaking of which, Tom sees Jerry and the toys which sounds like Odd. a 60s band, mm -hmm. are enjoying a grand feast. Thus, him and the cats try to invade. Hey, get back. Oh! Ow! Man, I feel like I've seen Tom go through worse, but that is the most mutilated <laughs> I've seen him since <laughs> any random cat. shot from the Willy Wonka movie. Uh, the second thing. magic changes oh. the cats into soldiers, oh. and of course, the cat king into a... Cat king. Cat king, of course. Oh, Jerry, what should we do? I don't run, know. Run, run. Found out right now, you can talk. Yeah. In fact, go, go, go. I, the adult, can never talk. Yet Tuffy, the baby, always speaks perfect English. This is Monsieur <laughs> Jerry's wish, and this kingdom sprang from those desires. Well, French English. Why is French he French? Accent. Yeah. Mr. Cat, I have a present for you. May? Oh, May. Real. There's no way she could guess my last name was Cat. <laughs> Jerry and the toys <laughs> escape, leaving the cats to get blown up. Somebody do something! Uh. <laughs> Am I crazy or like half the reactions to the slap thing like something Christ. out of a torture museum? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Just. Their fine. escape is short lived though, as Tom grabs them and plans to blast them out of a cannon. And oh boy, this isn't gonna age well. Oh, sorry, in past Tom and Jerry cartoons, when the cat with a black face shows up, I get a little nervous. Yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> the ballerina is left behind as Jerry and the rest are blasted through all the different backdrops in the theater. Ow. Okay, now you know they're begging us to ask, are they doing that on purpose? Yeah, I feel like they are. Touch, I'm shocked never made into a Toy Story movie. One of the toys can only talk when her string is pulled. I was thinking, we need someone to aid us. And? Wait. <laughs> Pull the string. Thank you. And I have this tag that reads, the toy maker. So they decide to find the toy maker while the king sends Tom, who he always calls Tim, which is pretty funny. Really? Tim, take all the men you need Tom, and sir. make sure that mouse never comes back. To finish them off, just in case they make their way back. We march you off to fight, we'll fight our foe with all our might. Good thing their inner monologues oh. all happen to think the same song. Ah. Okay, in a weird way, I can see this random magic giving Jerry and the cats this world to explore, but... Something about creating cat civilians? Why is that so hard for me to comprehend? Yeah, like, like Tom huh? blows this one a kiss. She seems all over it. Is the magic just going to possibly just give him a good time that night? Anything that can make <laughs> me think of the porno parody is probably not good. Please don't. Jer and the others make their way through a scary forest where they skate across a frozen river. Okay. Hey, look at me! Oh! This is one of the most playfully gruesome kids <laughs> cartoons I've ever seen. No kidding. I'm half expecting this to be like, Hey, look at me! <laughs> Redditary, anybody? This could Yeesh. be a little bit of a Halloween episode, too. <laughs> On that note, Jerry falls oh. through the ice and gets stuck in some of the seaweed, keeping him underwater. Uh oh Don't give up, buddy! Uh, jump in, why don't ya? This is the most epically cheerful mouse drowning music I've ever heard. Okay. This is the music Walken imagines when he tells his story about two mice falling into a bucket of cream. Jerry makes it out though as Tom gets closer to capturing him, but Tuffy pretends to be his conscience. When Tom questions where the little devil on his shoulder is, Tuffy decides to play both. Again, this is kind of a clever routine. <laughs> Just done all right. Uh, you forgot the tail. <laughs> can be PG for thematic elements and rudeness, but imagery that literally makes adults shout, Jesus is suitable for all audiences. <laughs> also, extra point for the Wilhelm scream. Though we do want to see a Sarlacc pit at the end of that fall. <laughs> Tuffy catches up to him. Sorry, just... <laughs> Hilarious. Well, I kind of like just the whole, like, I think I just sweat it like, Oh! <laughs> I don't know. Just hearing that Tom scream again, that would have just been hilarious. Anyway, Tommy's back. 
to Jerry to warn him about the approaching so it? Nibbles? Yeah, I swear, it's only even tougher than Nibbles. We speak. Our doom is delightfully scored. We <laughs> should be in chaotic danger more often. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jerry outwits him, though, in a horrifying way, you may ask. Why, yes. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Hey! Yunch! Every moment of violence looks like there's going to be a Sarah McLaughlin song accompanying it. <laughs> I'm kidding. This uh, is basically what people Rosie? saw when they first watched The Happening. Okay. They are with them too in a way that's pretty funny. <laughs> okay. What the hell? They really are the wrong people to do this. And our heroes make a run for it. I'm glad the special knows the importance of getting Tom's yell right, because man, it can take a moment that would be lackluster and suddenly make it hilarious. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> I guess this was the last production house of Barbera did oh, God. before he passed. And though, like I said, this isn't anything oh, amazing, his presence like is felt and definitely noticed when it's absent. Mm. Whoa. They enter a dragon I cave. Have... Okay, are I guess sure? I won't fight seeing a dragon in Nutcracker. As the scaly creatures oh. are sleeping and they have to get back the elf's head, which fell off earlier. Wah, wah. With fire bits? Or... Spirits? What? I swear animated films are trying to create a fetish for sexy fire. Hmm. Huh? Let me see. Right. Why, thank you, erotic element. Why? Then the dragon wakes up, but Jerry tries to lure him back to sleep, of course using the music from the ballet. Uh, I guess I can go back to sleep and dream about my titillating breath. Seriously, what was that? You got me. I don't even know what they were thinking when they did that scene. I think I would have just been like, uh, okay, who directed that scene again? You want to explain something, buddy? Because I think you let your fantasies into the movie again. Like, seriously. I mean, call me a Jets, man. Like, a Tom and Jerry, not a porno. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Moving along, they're about to reach the toy maker, if I remember correctly. Or Nibbles goes back. They're at a carnival now. Eh? All right. Backdrop the back there. Someone just heard the music and said, I oh. bet you're <laughs> Mama's boy. Ow. food. And everybody's Whee! frozen. I was going to get upset about that. It's Tom and Jerry. Oh. And they're kind of right. This gets a few chuckles. Oh, ow. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. No, really. His expressions could be a faces <laughs> of death honestly serves no purpose except to remind you she's in the story and sometimes I think the animators are drawing her too much. As we cut to even more shenanigans with Jerry and the gang escaping Tom. Who's Batman for some reason? I never thought I'd say this, but I could use a little bit more plot in Nutcracker right now. The slapstick is still good and all, but I need a nope. little something to shake things up. How are we gonna get her to talk? What the? That'll do. I no kidding, what the fuck? I'm sorry, did you drop huh? this adaptation? Where the hell did this guy come from? He looks the like whenever you say you don't believe in fairies, he's gonna take the dead fairy's place. I have special message for restoring speech. <laughs> No joke with the intensity of some of the other violence. I was thinking to myself, like, I take her goddamn teeth out. I thought I was going for the throat. She's forced to tell him how to find the toy maker as our heroes get closer to their destination. All we had to do was follow the star. No, no, you fools. A guiding star. Christmas. This is clearly leading to the birth of Brian. Can you imagine I got snagged on a branch? Again. Oh, the toy maker's got some knitting needles. Jackass isn't as axed and prone as you are. Mm -hmm. The toy maker's revealed to be Santa, and I am embarrassed to that admit that? I didn't figure that out earlier. And he does his best to help. When the sun rises, the magic that created your kingdom will fade. If you fail to reclaim your throne, it will remain the domain of the cats forever. What the hell does any of that mean? Yeah, no kidding. His kingdom didn't even exist 20 minutes ago. Yeah, you we said we magic. And eating. Now there's geopolitics in play? Like, should he just wait? Santa gives him an army of toy soldiers, which Jerry leads to take back the land. <laughs> Why do I love that this one soldier is a little off from the others? <laughs> like the animator said, eh, one of them would be drunk. Lower the drawbridge! <laughs> ah, the supporting cast, I forgot was even in this! 
Our mice pals get eaten, but the horse returns to redeem herself. But the sun comes up, resulting in the magic fading as the cats are literally kicked out of the show and back into the alley. But oh no, the day isn't saved yet. Heads up! Because there's literally just three minutes left. Ooh! Attack! Ooh. She starts saying burial instructions. <laughs> Jewish funeral, no glue factory. But random magic. Again? Random Hello. magics are back to life, and now she can talk even without a string. Now that's what I call a happy ending. What the? Wait, were they the, watching what? the whole. Huh? Wait, what? Is a backwards talking dwarf gonna announce this was a David Lynch production? What the hell is going on? Uh. And that was. No what buts here. What the hell? One of the best Tom and Jerry productions after the original shorts. Fair. Yeah, it's all right. Sounds about right. I can't say it has quite as much in it for adults like the original shorts, but the slapstick is still decent. A lot of the animation can be pretty to look at. And like I mentioned, it does seem more geared towards little kids. But having a younger target audience isn't a bad thing, and as True. those go, I think this has enough decent moments. The music, most of the time, matches the animation. There are a few moments where it doesn't quite work. <laughs> but you do give it a little leeway because it is a direct-to-video movie. And honestly, for 2007, this is more effort than I would too. expect. I don't know if I would watch it again, but if you're a Tom and Jerry fan, there's that a corny elegance should go to it, check it out. just enough laughs and creativity to be worth at least one view. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. Thank you, bud. <laughs> Ow! Ah! Ow! <laughs> Sorry, I have to go for one more. Oh, there you go, the Nutcracker Tale from Tom and Jerry. And I gotta admit, I can definitely feel like it's definitely one of the better Tom and Jerry specials. Like, compared to the others, I mean. You know? What do you guys think? You got a favorite? Let me know. Till next time, adios.